Hello friends, welcome back to another video tutorial from Somos Biology. And in this video lecture, we want to talk about the transmission electron microscopy or TEM. In the last lecture, we have talked about the overview of electron microscopy and we have seen why electron microscopy is better in terms of resolution compared to the light microscopy. And we also know that there are some differences in terms of working principle of electron microscopy with that of the light microscopy. Now it's time to talk about the transmission electron microscopy in details. Now, if you recall the last lecture, if you haven't seen that, I'll recommend you to watch that because a lot of things I've discussed earlier. But still, in a nutshell, I'm going to tell you, the electron microscopy has the ability to give us better resolution images with even greater magnification. That's why you use that to look at the subcellular structures in individual structure of protein, uh, I mean, cellular components and all in details, not proteins mostly. But in this case, why we get a better resolution of, uh, with the help of electron microscope because of the wavelength they use 0.2 nanometer compared to the light microscope wavelength of light that is 500 nanometer and we know less wavelength of light means more energy of uh, the wave and that's going to give us a better resolution now in electron microscopy we know that uh, an electron beam is created from the source and what is the source the source is a tungsten filament so let me write these things in here. Uh, let me erase all these th things from there. So the source is the tungsten filament here. Tungsten filament. Tungsten filament uh, upon heating the tungsten filament, if you heat it, is going to produce electron, a lot of electron. Now the thing is this electron produced, although the electron is produced, but how can we guide the electrons to move towards uh, our optics, whatever optics we have here, we don't have lens optics, but we have different kind of electromagnetic lenses. Because if I draw the overall big picture of how this whole system works, it, it will go something like this, this is the source, let's say, source, okay, and from there electron is coming in. Uh, and there is this condenser lens, we will draw the lenses like this, this is condenser lens and then after condenser there is this sample or specimen and then there is this objective lens, objective lens, there is this eyepiece lens and then finally detector. Okay. So this is a very very basic transmission electron microscopy drawing for the working principle. And if you compare this with a light microscope, you won't find any difference at all. Because there is a light source, then condenser, sample, objective lens, eyepiece lens, then detector. Very fine, very exactly same as light microscope. But the difference is these lenses are not optical, but it's, they are not uh, glass lenses. They are electromagnetic lenses. All this, this this and this they are electromagnetic lenses okay and one more thing is that the source it's not light source it's the tungsten filament we are talking about and the electron that is produced here it's a lot of electron produced but now the electron must be focused through all these lenses so that they reach the sample it's very very important for us to arrange the electron as a single beam and focus that as a sing single beam towards the specimen very very important but we cannot achieve that only with the help of the electron generation so we need to have something we need to add a lot of energy to the electron so that they can move straight okay as a single beam to reach the specimen for that reason we need to add some extra energy voltage high very high voltage approximately 20 kilo volt 20,000 volt imagine 110 220 is the normal 220 is the normal household voltage now it's 20,000 voltage 20,000 volt or 20 kilo volt that amount of voltage is added the energy is added and then the electron can be focused through the condenser then into the sample from the sample then through objective through eyepiece it needs to reach the detector because we are not going to see that in front of our eyes. We must have a detector to detect that because it's electrical uh, like uh, in this case, it's uh, electron scattering and we cannot 
see electrons in front of our eyes like that. We need to have a detector to detect that, right? So in this process, we need to use high voltage. This is one important parameter. The second thing is that sometimes to focus the electron properly towards the sample, we need to use other uh, positively charged electrodes, which are also known as anodes. So we may need to use anode to focus this electron as a single beam, but mostly the anode is utilized in case of scanning electron microscopy, not in case of transmission electron microscopy. Now what happens to the sample? This sample is not the conventional samples that we can see under the light microscope. Because light microscope mechanical uh, structure and principle is quite simple. Light passes through the sample. If we stain the sample, the dark color uh, region of the stain is going to receive more light uh, and the light color is going to pass through, like light pass through the light uh, region or lighter region of the sample. But in this case, the sample must be cut very very thin. We need to have an ultra thin, ultra thin sample here. We must have an ultra thin sample. Why? Because we want to see much details, as much details as we can in this. Because we don't have better magnification, better resolution than this scanning electron micro, uh, transmission electron microscopy in our hand yet. So the electron beam passes through the sample. Now this sample is made up with different atoms. We know that because we are looking at the atomic level because we are dealing with the electrons here. So the sample uh, specimen, let's say this is a specimen. These are the heavy, heavy regions, heavy atoms and these are the light atoms. So the heavy atoms are going to absorb more electron and Sorry, and the light atoms are going to absorb less electron. Less electron absorbed, more electron pass through the sample because of the light atoms present there. Okay, so these are transmittance, transmittance of electrons, and here in this case, less transmittance, more absorbance in the heavy atom. So as a result of this varying absorbance of electron we are going to see an image with dark and the light color but everything that we are going to see here will be in black and white there is no color image possible for electron microscopy because electron are not going to give us any colored images like that so those beautiful colored images that you see either with the light microscopy with better staining or with confocal microscopy fluorescent microscopy okay but they have a limit they cannot uh, have a better resolution like the uh, electron microscopy. So in electron microscopy you will always see a black and white image where dark colored black means heavy atoms those regions made up with heavy atoms and light uh, atoms they have a grayish color not the, that much of dark or black but grayish color that will be the idea of this transmission electron microscopy and then finally the electron they again pass through the objective eyepiece and finally uh, the detector but remember objective eyepiece they are not made up with glass they are made up with again electromagnetic uh, lenses because when we charge them with energy we charge them with current they are turning into a magnetic field and that magnetic field helps us to pull and maintain the single electron beam through this vacuum chamber if you think about this chamber this is airtight or vacuum chamber because air can destroy this electron beam it, it will interfere with the electron with the electron it's not going to give us a better image so we need to have a vacuum sealed air sealed chamber through which the electron can pass ultimately hits the detector detector is going to give us an image that is the idea of transmission electron microscopy electron is transmitting through ultra thin sample and heavy atoms uh, are going to absorb more of electron light atoms are going to uh, transmit more i mean electron is going to pass through the light region of the specimen quite well so as a result of which we get a high contrast image and along with that we get a better resolution image due to the 0.2 nanometer of the wavelength right so that is the overall working principle of transmission electron microscopy why it is utilized you can clearly see the picture that i am giving you this is a picture of transmission electron microscopy and you can see these pictures in black and white color always and we are going to see the cell structure the structure of nucleosome so any other structure that we cannot visualize with the light microscopy quite well we are going to use electron microscopy to visualize them okay so any of the chromosome dna and all the other structures we can clearly visualize with the help of electron microscopy right 
so that's all about transmission electron microscopy so sample preparation for transmission electron microscopy is one of the very painful tasks because we need to cut the sample very very thin with the help of diamond knife but uh, once we do that with the proper sampling the effects the results are quite ast astonishing right so that's the idea of it so if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends subscribe to our channel to get more videos like that and stick to this whole series because in the next video we're going to talk about scanning electron microscopy as well thank you